Welcome to season six of Weather Watch. This season, we expect to bring you even more exciting pieces that you won't want to miss. But before we get to those, let's get you caught up on weather headlines from this summer in this edition of Weather in 60 Seconds. Landslides in Nepal, a tropical depression in Asia, and hurricanes in Hawaii are all part of this edition of Your Weather in 60 Seconds. Let's begin with the recent landslides in Nepal in northern India. Back in August, both Nepal and India had torrential rainfall that caused landslides and major flooding throughout the region. Due to these excessive floods, disaster management made it known to stay away from contaminated water as a cholera outbreak was expected. Hundreds of deaths were recorded with thousands displaced from their homes. Moving over to Asia, starting off as a tropical depression, Typhoon Glinda headed full force towards Guam as a Category 4 super typhoon. This typhoon made landfall three separate times, each of which caused thousands of dollars in damages. It lasted from July 9th until July 20th and left the later impacted China with $1 billion worth of damages and 18 deaths. Our last stop is Hawaii, which has not been hit by a hurricane since the 1990s. It was quite the surprise when not one, but two hurricanes approached Hawaii this past summer. The Izel and Julio combination left Hawaii with a lot of rain and rough surf, and although damages weren't extensive, the back-to-back -back hurricanes will definitely be one for the books. And that'll do it for your weather in 60 seconds. Millersville University is one of the only schools that allows research opportunities for undergraduates in the meteorology program. In fact, this past year alone, we've sent out two research projects. Last season, we heard about the OWLS project, and now we have Megan Nielsen here with us to explain her experiences with the Discover AQ project funded by NASA. Entering into the world of research isn't always easy during the first time. You begin by doing preparation and learning instruments that may not make much sense to you until actually implemented out on the field. Through all the struggles that go along with the research project, there is also a feeling of accomplishment after completing long days of recording and analyzing data. I, along with other Millersville University students, had the opportunity to take part in the final portion of the Discover AQ project. The project began in 2011 in the Baltimore, Washington, D.C. area, and throughout the years has ventured to the San Joaquin Valley in California, Houston, Texas, and ended the campaign in Denver, Colorado this past summer. The goal of this NASA-funded project is to analyze factors that lead to unhealthy air quality conditions and improve the ability to diagnose air quality conditions from space. This was my second opportunity to take part in Discovery Q, and my experiences this time around was just as rewarding, if not more, than my first. After already going through the process of working my instrument, the Tetherson, in Houston, I was able to hold my own during my time in Denver, and was also able to explain to others new to the project how the Tetherson was used. Things that seemed impossible to get the hang of during my first project finally started to become easier to do this time. Problems that would pop up in Houston were easier to figure out this summer because I had already faced this issue before. Not many undergraduates get this amazing chance to participate in a research project, so I am extremely grateful that I got to take part in two. For Weather Watch, I'm student meteorologist Megan Nielsen. Thanks, Megan. Research projects are a great way to learn new concepts and get out in the field. But one can't arrive to a conclusion unless you analyze that research data first. Our own Rosa Brothman is here to explain exactly how that is done here at Millersville. Data analysis at Millersville University is a very unique undergraduate experience. Most students at other universities are given the data from professors to analyze and that's that. But Millersville is unique in that they offer their students the opportunity to go out and do field work then come back to school to analyze it. It's a time-consuming job that requires diligent individuals to get the work done before the deadline and to be extremely organized. Each instrument has its own program installed on the computer or laptop where the information flows in, then it can be analyzed later. We use a variety of tools in order to organize the data with the most common program being Excel. Two research projects that recently took place are OWL's and NASA's Discover AQ, which are currently being quality assured. Things we look for in the data are anomalies, fluctuations, human or algorithmic error, and possible research proposals. Our main goal is to organize the data to make it available to the public. The data process usually lasts for a couple of months after the field project, depending on the data being observed. Students who are interested in attending graduate school typically work with the data from previous projects, giving them more experience for graduate school competitors. Reporting for WeatherWatch, I'm student meteorologist Rosa Brothman. Thanks, Rosa. Well, that's all we have for you for this episode of Weather Watch. Please be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at the addresses shown below. 
You can also check out our entire collection of episodes at muweatherwatch.com. On behalf of the entire cast and crew, I'm your host, Rachel Coulter. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.